Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to my channel Server Gyan. My name is Dr. Lokendra Singh and today I'm going to discuss with you about my experience which I have with, about my inter experience of interview which I have recently faced. So like the couple of questions which the interviewer asked me and I replied them. So I want to share with you because I went for DevOps interview and so many people are asking me in personal or maybe after writing question on YouTube channel. So I'm going to explain the, some questions which are usually put or which I had to face. But before starting this video guys, I would like to request you to please like, share and subscribe to my channel as you, you will be notified for my upcoming videos. Thank you. So the very first question was that for example, if I have hundred of servers or uh, maybe uh, you can take example you have five servers and you have to create a shared mount point between all so the interviewer asked me can i mount more than can i, I can i mount to one ebs it means elastic block storage to multiple ec2 instances so answer should be no reason being ebs has limitations that you cannot mount one in one particular uh, e elastic volume to multiple instances okay so the next question was okay if that is not possible then how can we achieve that particular solution so the answer should be EFS it means elastic file system uh, which I have already created a video on so you can uh, you can follow that so I have created a video on that so you can use EFS for that it means elastic file system that is almost like NFS and that is usually used to, uh, to share data across multiple EC2 instances. Fine. Now EFS sync, uh, EFS file sync or R sync, which is better option? This was a nice question to me that I have maybe uh, you can take example of 5 TB data that I have to put 5 TB data to EFS. So do I need to use R sync or elastic file system? Elastic file system file sync option. What, what do I need to use? So the best option is elastic file system sync. The reason being R sync is the utility which is used to transfer data from one server to another. Obviously this is faster and this is reliable as well. But though even is, uh, EFS file system is best option. Reason being it can transfer data up to five times faster than R sync or maybe CP or maybe SCP command. Because this use parallel syncing for uh, updating data from your source to EFS. Fine. So next question was, okay, what is the difference between R-Sync and EFS agent? So the basic difference is R-Sync is such a utility which is used for transferring data from source to destination. But if you talk about EFS agent, EFS agent is built by AWS and especially for transferring high volume of data. So you can use that particular, let me, let me take you to one uh, like blog or uh, one documentation from the side of AWS. So you can read it here that this is secure, that this is secure and it uses parallel and it can copy data approx five times faster than normal uh, R-Sync or CP. So you can read here if you need to move a large collection of files from one on-premises in cloud file system or to Amazon Elastic file system. Uh, this tool is for you. Simple command CP or asking uh, predate to the cloud and cannot deliver throughput required move massive amount of data from place to place. So this particular uh, tool can provide you up to five times throughput. So it is written here that EFS file sync uses a secure highly parallel data transfer mechanism that can run up to five times faster than the tool I mentioned in above. It means the particular author is talking about CP in R sync. So if someone asks you which one is better, so obviously your uh, EFS agent is going to be faster, but make sure that R sync is also reliable tool. You can use both because R sync works on block level file storage. So uh, I have already created a video on R sync, so you can go through my channel and you will definitely find out. And for your uh, like facility, I will definitely provide the link of that particular uh, video in this tutorial description box. Fine. Okay, so next question was the like I have a couple of containers running and I want to I want to mount any specific volume from my physical server to that uh, container. So how do I need to do, do that? So when we write a docker file, I hope you remember the concept of docker file. D-O-C-K, yeah, docker file is a particular 
mechanism which is usually used within this so docker file so within docker file we have to use this particular section here volume equal to this this so if you do this so it means your volume will be mounted inside container fine so uh, you can go through you can, you can check it out like this is a particular syntax of docker file which i have mentioned here for your uh, like uh, help if you have okay next question was if you have an ec2 instance running in singapore how will you migrate to another region so obviously so what are the steps create a snapshot create create a snapshot of that then after migrate a snap then after create a m i out of it then after a spin e c2 using this a m i so this is how you can migrate your server from one region to another okay so when you are going to create a snapshot what is the what is the use of uh, reboot or no reboot option it means when your data server is in production and then uh, maybe like uh, gps of data is being written to your uh, volumes so when you when you initiate for creating backup or when you initiate for creating a snapshot so obviously data is stored to a specific point only if your data is con uh, consistent being written onto your disk and you do not go for reboot option so it means you will find some data inconsistency in that particular snapshot or maybe in that particular uh, ami which you will create after using this that snapshot which is created before without reboot option so you may find some data inconsistency fine so if that is a production server and you can bear some downtime uh, for that so definitely you are supposed to go for a reboot option otherwise if that is critical server you can uh, bear some data incons inconsistency so no need to go for that and you can go for no reboot so no reboot means you will have to find some you, you will definitely find some data inconsistency within your upcoming machine and reboot means there will be no data inconsistency because your machine will be taken down before starting or before initiating a snapshot of the machine fine so what if any uh, page gives you 404 error so it means this simply means that the particular page which you which is going are not found so that is not available on the server or if the page is available permissions are okay everything is working fine it means you have configured something wrong within your uh, maybe your uh, web server's configuration file if that is http <coughs> sorry so if that is http so uh, sorry if that is nginx so maybe you might have configured this directory which is known as location in wrong manner or if that is apache so you may you might have configured d i r e c t o r y directory in wrong manner so you need to check this particular stuff that whether your directory and your locations are defined properly after that uh, how to uh, what is the difference between aws direct connect and vpn so aws direct connect connection is the particular service which is provided from the side of amazon and some specific vendors are already partner with aws so if you want to go with this so you cannot select yeah uh, select your own choice of vendor but with the vpn so you can choose your own selected vpn your own vendor whatever vendor you want to go for and after that you can initialize your vpn connection obviously aws direct connect, uh, connection is not fault tolerant so if that goes down so your connecting your connectivity may goes go down so for best solution you should have both enabled aws direct connect connection as well as vpn if your vpn go down so definitely you have aws dcc and uh, it means direct connect connection or if your uh, vpn goes down so you have this one enabled okay then how to create vpc i have already created a video but just uh, just to show you guys that how to create and what all components does vpc has so uh, i'm going to show you today as well once again this will be one fresh very fresh enough videos for you so let me show you that if you are going to initiate with vpc so first of all go for a uh, vpc dashboard that what type what type of vc vpc you have and what sort of stuff you are going to have so go for vpc dashboard first of all so all vpcs in this region if you have any launch vpc wizard so first of all you will have to check that what sort of vpc you are going to create with single public subnet 
uh, with one public one private subnet so this will be architecture of this single public subnet you will have all the publics all the servers configured so every uh, pub, every instance which is going to be created inside this may have one public ip address if you want so obviously it will not be assigned it means you can have public and private both but by default it is designed in such a fashion that all the ec2 machines should have public ip address then to one public and private so this is the sample of that one public subnet where internet is connected netting netting is enabled and this is private subnet so this this private subnet can communicate to public this public can communicate to this private but these servers are not going to have uh, basically uh, inter internet connection or if we have netting enabled so obviously these can download some packages from internet but no one from internet can hit the, uh, hit the, the server directly then after uh, VP, uh, VPC with public and private subnet with hardware VPN. The particular question which I was asked, so this was the scenario like this server are not enabled with port number 22, neither these servers are, but we have hardware VPN connected from corporate data center to AWS cloud. And final is uh, one, private subnet with VPN. It means if you want to connect to these servers, so your VPN should be enabled for that. So this is how uh, you can create your VPC and obviously I have created a couple of videos on that topic so you can go through them. Okay, what is the difference between private and public, so public subnet? So within private subnet no one can access internet or if internet is not given them so obviously that is known as pri uh, private subnet but if you talk about public subnet so you can have one to one IP mapping on your EC2 instances within your public subnet where your internet gateway is associated so that subnet is known as public subnet or where internet gateway net gateway is not associated associated so that is known as private subnet it means availability of internet makes any subnet public and absence of internet makes any subnet as private subnet okay how to access the next question was okay if i need to download something from internet so how do i need to access internet on my private subnet so answer is net gateway either net gateway uh, or you can call it net instance net instance or net gateway are the solution for this it means either you can configure net gateway or you can go for net instance so using this particular mechanism you can access internet on your private subnet fine so the next question was that i have one uh, maybe one auto scaling group running and I want to suspend this for maybe a couple of hours or maybe for one hour. So how do I need to do that? So this is a particular command which you can execute. Fine. Or you can go for like uh, uh, web of processing. So which is available on the interface of your EC2. Sorry. On your EC2. Go for auto scaling group and there is an option where you can select that how to. Uh, suspend or how to uh, how to work with your auto scaling group i have already uh, described in one of my video you can go through that fine so what is next question so next question is what could be the issue if we are not able to create read replica of rds okay this is a good question and obviously the, this was asked so issue is if no backup no backup is enabled so you will not be able to create read replica of your rds so if you create any any rds database inside aws so definitely you will have to create backup you will have to enable backup at least for a single day if that is not enabled so it means you shall not be able to create any sort of read replica of that instance next discussion was like can we create read replica across rep, across uh, regions so obviously we can create but for creating any read replica, we should have backup enabled for our RDS instance. Okay, the final question uh, for today is like, uh, what is use of Ansible module run once? So if you are going to uh, run this module run once, so it means when you are going to execute your playbook on your servers. So when the playbook will be executed very first time, so only then this will get executed. Otherwise, if your playbook is uh, running, getting getting executed multiple times, so it will be of no impact. So these are some interview questions, guys. If you have further interview questions and if you want to know or if you want to elaborate me for some more interview questions, so please do write in comment box. I shall be happy to create some further videos for interview purpose, and you shall be able to face your interview. Happy happy learning from server again, and good luck for your upcoming interviews. If you have further questions, please do write in comment box. Thank you very much.
Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to these videos and please share with your friends and do not forget to press bell icon as you will be notified for my upcoming videos. Thank you very much. Happy learning. Thank you.